Hello, I'm Andrew Rukeski. I'm a graduate student in the Tretyakova lab. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a very basic technique used in molecular biology where we streak out clones on an auger plate. This is important to do because whenever you're using a plasmid for anything such as growing recombinant protein or transfecting cells, you want to make sure that that plasmid is pure. If we just use bulk bacteria to do this, there's a chance that you'll introduce mutations into your plasmid, which is not ideal for molecular biology purposes. By streaking out plates on colonies, we'll isolate individual bacteria and every member of that colony should be genetically identical. Uh, this procedure, it's important to have as sterile as possible a working environment in order to not introduce any other microbes in the area into your plates. So we're going to start by spraying down the area and then turning on the Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner will allow the air to circulate and prevent the dust particles in the air from settling into your plates. So first, like that. Just give this whole area a good solid wipe down. Right, now in turning on the Bunsen burner, it's always important to have your safety glasses. Start. You want to be able to hear this hiss before you light it, so you know the gas is flowing. Right, and this is the level of flame you want. It's nice and blue. By opening this up more, you introduce more Oxygen, right, this is exactly what we want. A light blue cone inside of a darker blue flame. So the procedure is pretty easy. We want to put the bacteria that are in this auger jab onto this auger plate. So to start, we're gonna assume this is all sterile, but this is not sterile. And the easiest way to sterilize this but the secondary function of the Bunsen burner, which is to heat it up. You're gonna want it to turn red hot like this, kill off anything that was just sort of lingering on there. Now we'll wait a few seconds for it to cool down and just for good measure, touch it to the gel. This is an auger stab where a bacteria was seeded into this with a pipette tip and stabbed down into the gel. You can maybe see a little bit of cloudiness on the edges there. Those are the bacterial films that have grown up in there. And just for good measure, I'm going to re-sterilize this. I don't know if I touched it to anything. Open this up, just pass it briefly through there to Draw out the air, and this is just going to be scraped along the surface here. Now this gets scraped along gently the surface. The important thing here is you want to try to not dig too hard into the auger. Then each time, give it a 90 degree turn. You then turn 90 degrees, drag the wire loop through the tracks we just made, and turn it again on 90 degrees, drag that through tracks that we just made. We're done with this loop now. You can sterilize it and just put it back in our storage space. Okay, this is now ready to go. We're going to uh, walk it over to the incubator. Before we do that, we just want to maintain sterility by sealing this up with paraffin strips. This just gets wrapped all the way around the edge here. Right. 
And if you look just right, you might be able to see some of the streaks in the wire loop on the gel. Anyway, this is good to go, and it will go into the incubator. So before, when we put it in the incubator, the only thing to bear in mind is that it should go upside down so that any condensation that forms in there isn't going to drip down onto your bacterial colonies and spread them out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that overnight and check it tomorrow morning. And what we'd like to see is in that initial area where we first put down bacteria from the auger stab, that should be very much a full lawn of bacteria. And that second streak is gonna take a few bacteria out of that and spread them out a bit more. And then in that last spot, we're going to see the bacteria are spread out enough that individual colonies are gonna form. And those are the ones that we're going to use to grow up stocks to isolate plasmids to do our subsequent experiments.